Okay, welcome to Into the Channel podcast, primarily about women's football. Before we hit the pitch, if you enjoy the show or love women's football as much as your boys do, come kick it with us already. Subscribe, follow YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to watch or listen. Leave us a review over your favorite podcast app. Links to all of our socials in the show notes of this episode. I am your host, Dino DeCespedes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Grant Angle. What is up, man? I'm feeling all right, buddy. It is good to be back. It's been a little while. Work things, unexpected illnesses Mm -hmm. kept us off the pitch for a while, but I think I'm ready for a celebratory beverage to the ITC being back. Where are you on this? You know, I was almost a DNP, do not pod, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm feeling good. I think the the stomach bug issues are behind us, so I'm I'm ready to crack one. I mean, incredible recent few days behind us, Mm -hmm. incredible couple days ahead of us, a lot to Mm -hmm. talk about, a lot to celebrate. Let's fucking go. All right. Sounds like I remember it. Cheers. Cheers to you. Yeah, I would say uh, some pretty entertaining football games played this weekend on our side of the pond. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Huge weekend for your boy. I was in the building at one of these NWSL semifinal matchups. Would love to get into that one with you. But as is customary, Mr. Grand Angle, where do you want to get started? I mean, there's no other place to get started other than beautiful Orlando, Florida. Let's go. Your home base. One half of the home base of this very podcast. (laughs) As you said, you were in the building. Please, please tell us about Orlando Pride 3, Kansas City Current 2. I mean, one for the ages, I think. Um, I kind of want to like just kind of get right into it. So coming into this one, I did feel like this one was for the championship. Wow. I thought these were the two best teams. I thought whoever wins this one is going to basically hoist the trophy this coming Saturday. Got off to kind of like a an interesting start. The match definitely got chippier as it went. Hmm. KC gets on the board first. Cooper, genius cross, finds Dabinia, who had a lot, a lot to do on the finish, but picture perfect finish. Cross scoots just under Emily Sam's outstretched leg. And that's pretty much the only way you're going to beat Orlando 1-0. <laughs> but <laughs> the equalizer wasn't far behind. So this season, Haley McCutcheon hadn't scored in the regular season 22 matches. She gets her second in two weeks. All she does is score in the playoffs. And then Allie Watt served her the assist. And if my research skills are right, I think Allie Watt only had two assists her entire uh, NWSL regular season career that spanned four seasons. She's now got three assists in the last two playoff matches as well. Um, I asked Seb Hines about this, specifically about Allie Watt. So I'm like, okay, you turned Allie Watt basically into an assist machine. Tell me about that. (laughs) Nice. So, so Seb on unlocking Ali Watt says, I quote, just simplifying her game, going at players, slowing down to then using her speed. And then it's that last final part, that execution of the cross. You can see her game grow, especially this back end of the season. She's been phenomenal and she knows there's a lot of quality just behind her as well. And so it keeps everyone on their toes. They know that they need to perform when they get that opportunity. So you've seen that with Ali's game. I thought that was awesome. It's perfect. I mean, that is a, it's such a microcosm of a team that has an identity, a team that plays for each other, where you have these moments. So, like you talk about, like Haley McCutcheon, not known to score goals Mm -hmm. two in in two weeks. Allie Watt, not known as, as kind of the assist maker. She does so many other things on the field. Now she's serving in passes to create goals. So, as an opponent, you come into the game with an idea of what Orlando Pride is going to do. Mm -hmm. And now here's this new list of things that they're actually capable of doing that you haven't even prepared for. Yeah. And it's such a great creative use of Ali Watt as a player Mm. because you see her, I mean, like definitely had stretches of season where it wasn't seeing the field as much. Yeah. And now you see her kind of like in this role where it's like, I got the ball, I'm attacking and I'm looking across and I'm going to use my speed and I'm going to use my quickness and I'm going to make it really, really hard on you. And at that, she's just out of this world. It's really, really incredible. I asked Seb about Haley McCutcheon as well. And here's what he had to say, quote, Haley's grown in that midfield role and she's starting to get higher up the field, especially when Marty's dropping down and you know she's very committed. And when Allie gets that ball, Haley commits to her run and she gets her reward by putting in the back of the net. And they're just two examples of this team's wanting to continue to grow. Seb talked about Haley coming on as a defender, as a fullback, 
and kind of finding her spot in the midfield. And it was so cool on the goal because you see Benda occupy one of the center backs, Adriana occupies the other. Haley just kind of like slides right in, pitch and catch, you know, kind of like an easy kind of tap in, but also extremely creative and something that I don't think Kansas City saw coming. And now it's 1-1. When stuff like that happens, obviously, the lion's share of the credit goes to the players, uh, Ali Watt, Haley McCutcheon in this in this instance. And, and they deserve credit for kind of growing into these roles. But it's worth pointing out, that's your manager of the year right there. Oh, yeah. Because you have to see it from the organizational standpoint to be like, well, maybe maybe McCutcheon could do a little more. Maybe maybe we move her up the field a little bit. Or maybe you have this new idea for Ali Watt as, as you kind of see different aspects of her game. You guys were nearly invincible this season. You lift the shield. Now you're sitting there looking at a final. Yeah. And I think the equalizer did so much. Mm. Actually, let me rewind a little bit because when Orlando goes down 1-0, I actually went back and checked this. This was the first time Orlando had trailed in a match of consequence since March. Amazing. You know, I was really interested to see, okay, they're down 1-0, one match away from the final. And and watching from the press box, you can see Cooper, Dabinia, Chuinga, they're celebrating. They're ecstatic. They're up 1-0. Yeah. You know, at Orlando, like this is like the start, not really the start, but like, you know, this is the first half they were looking for, I think. Yeah. And then I look over and the pride players are in the tightest players only meeting huddle I think I've ever <laughs> seen. And it looked like it was instantaneous. Like the balls in the back of the end oh, it felt like all 11 players were just in a huddle, like arm in arm, trying to sort out what's going to happen there. I asked Emily Sams about this in the presser. Here's what she had to say. I was like, hey, what were the vibes? What did you guys talk about there uh, immediately after the goal? And she says, and I quote, just to stay calm, we knew we were better than them, <laughs> which I love. Jeez. <laughs> and that we could score on them. It was unfortunate that we had to go down, but we just had to keep our composure. And we stuck together as a team and knew that we would be able to break them down at some point, end quote. I love it. What evidence does she have? From the remainder of this season, that would be contrary to that. I love that kind of belief. That's that's big talk right there. I mean, who's to tell Emily Sams that they weren't better? Not this guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and she was right because <laughs> a little bit after halftime, uh, Kylie Strom grabs hold of a ball, breaks out the pitching wedge, taps one right over the top, right into Banda. Banda spins a la Shaq against the Kings, catching that alley. <laughs> <laughs> And basically chooses violence, just explodes through the ball. Alma Schultz doesn't even move, like doesn't even no. move a muscle, totally dead in the water. I mean, the ferocity of that finish, it sent a shockwave through, through, I mean, through the entire stadium. Hard not to feel like this match was only going to end one way after that. I mean, I know mm -hmm. it's easy to say after the fact, but when you use the word ferocity, I think that's the best way to describe it. I could not believe how hard she struck that ball. And not because I didn't think Barbara Benda is capable of that. It was just the quickness of the turn. I didn't think a human being would be able to strike a ball in that compact of a movement with that velocity. And I mean, she just hammered that thing into the back of the net. Yeah. I mean, I feel like everybody froze and just, <laughs> as soon as the turn happens, it's over. Sharples doesn't, doesn't make contact with the ball. And Benda last week in the presser, <laughs> mentioned something along, I'm paraphrasing here, but mentioned something along, along the lines of, I know I get into defenders' heads. I know defenders are afraid of me, you know, when they see me coming and I love that feeling. And I'm just like, come on, man. <laughs> this is That's really awesome. happening. Oh, it was so great. And then you texted me about the third goal. I want to get your perspective and then I'll tell you kind of like what it was like in the building. Marta, an all-time moment in, I mean, the stakes don't get too much higher. You know, technically, I guess you could say they get a little higher. But the goat with a goat moment, I mean, what what was your reaction watching that? So, I mean, it's obviously immediate edge of your seat when Benda dispossesses and then gets it forward to, to Marta. And then, of course, it's just like, okay, this should be it. And even then, thinking, it was like, okay, Marta's on, uh, on with the keeper. She has defenders running after her. But when she sits down the two defenders, your brain can't even, my brain couldn't even really process it. Where I was just like, "Oh, that's good," and then, and then she deeks the keeper, and it's in the and it's in the net, and she just explodes. And then like it took it took another second or two for me to be like, "Whoa, that was like really amazing!" <laughs> like <laughs> like I watch it happen. I'm like, uh, "Okay, goal three one. They're going to the final like this." And I'm like, "Uh huh." Whoa, hold on a second. That was incredible. It was on the press box side too, so we could all see it from up top. Wow, and. 
you could hear the uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and like when the goal happens it was like an extended like hooting and hollering just in an uncontrollable you know like you've got people covering the game and just yeah the press box went bananas that's the first time i've ever uh experienced something like that nice. it was it was an, it was an amazing moment that goal i think pretty i mean effectively kind of ended the match i mean to emily sam's point even though the pride went down they felt in control of that match they were getting yeah. You know kind of the better chances the current stats wise i think you know had had the edge in possession i think outshot the pride too but never felt like they were kind of in control of the match that orlando back line had a ton of big time blocks yep. they were super active chewinga a little bit frustrated just a master class performance from orlando you get the handball late that makes it three two and then you get that one moment late <laughs> as well where Morehouse is caught way out. There was some sweating in the, in the press box as well, too, because Chewinga gets that chip. Uh, and I think, again, Kayla Sharples gets a look at it. Tough spot, high-pressure moment, You know, not yeah. the best circumstances, but had an, had an opportunity, I think it's fair to say there. But this one ends 3-2. Orlando advances. What's your feel for this team kind of heading into next week? I'm happy that I've been saying it. It feels like we might be going on 10-plus weeks, I think, of me saying it. The double remains on. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I mean, obviously, it's as live as it could possibly get. I think going back to something you had said earlier, I think we're in a little bit of disagreement here where you said you think you believed Orlando versus Kansas City were the two best teams. I think you guys are playing the second best team in the final. And I think Mm. there are some coaching advantages that Washington Spirit has that maybe Kansas City current does not have. But you're in the final with Barbara Benda and Marta. So I would suggest, I know I know it's always easy for a neutral to say, I think you should be feeling pretty good. Let's talk about that Washington Spirit side. So they finish 1-1 against Gotham, goes to PKs. What were your takeaways from this one? Good match. Didn't know it at the time. It was it was really the first of, of two pretty incredible matches, uh, which is always wonderful to have, especially mm-hmm. when you have your semifinals both kind of live up to the hype. Yep. Gotham looked really threatening in the first 10 you didn't know how it was going to go. They they were very clearly part of a champion, not scared of playing on the road in a big semifinal like this. But then Spirit started to kind of take back more control after that 10th minute, kind of started to get a little more on the ball. Lacey Santos had a strike from a Rodman cross that was an absolute bullet that uh, Ancatrin Berger was able to save. I think on most days, uh, Santos, when she strikes the ball that purely, is probably going to score that. But when you have Berger back there, you know, she's able to kind of stop those. It felt like Washington probably had the better of things for long stretches, but those bats, you just can't settle with them. They're always lurking. Yeah. I thought Esther was great. Rose Lavelle, I thought was great. Ellis Stevens was great. Yasmeen Ryan, super solid. I mean, they're, they're just Carter had a good game. Mm -hmm. You could just kind of go up and down the lineup. Two really professional teams kind of battling it out. And I thought the spirit on the other side was really good too. Rodman, Quasi, oh, yeah. Santos, who you mentioned, Hirschfeld. In my notes, I, I wrote whatever win probability algorithm that's trying to figure out who's ahead in this one and where this one is going to land is probably sweating right now. <laughs> like it's just so <laughs> smoke coming out of that that machine. Because um, I had no no clue. I think this one could have went either way. Pretty fitting that it goes to penalty kicks. But before that, you know, obviously really good football being played. Where were you focusing? You know, kind of like during that match. I'm glad you kind of led things off when when the first player you named was Astaire. Scored the winner in last year's final and is just a big player in big moments. I think mm-hmm. that is set in stone at this point. That header, uh, you know, with the keeper going the other way and she needs to kind of send it back where yeah. it came from to Perfect. get it in just like, yeah, right near, right near the post. I mean, it's probably boring analysis, but what else do you expect? From Astaire. That's uh, like, seriously, that's who she is. She is a great player in big moments like that. It's a, it's a joy to watch her play. Yeah. I mean, she's so slippery. She's so shifty. Yep. She's super creative. In my notes, I also wrote that uh, she won a basically a 20 80 ball like early to, <laughs> to turn that into a chance. She's just relentless. Yeah. And I think, you know, as a Pride fan, I was kind of a little encouraged seeing how much success she was having. Mm hmm. It showed maybe a little little bit of vulnerability from that Washington defense. So that's something that I think we're going to keep an eye on. But switching over to Washington, what did you see from from their side? I think they showed a great amount of grit. I don't think it was the best match from Trinity Rodman. I don't think it was the best match you would, you're going to get from Ashley Hatch. I thought they kind of gutted mm-hmm. it out to kind of keep themselves in the game. 
You think about Jonathan Heraldes and he brings on McKenna Morris right around the 70th minute, I think the 67th minute, she ends up with the assist. What they identified when Morris comes onto the pitch is basically McKenna Morris to Hal Hirschfeld is the new Joe Theismann to Art Monk <laughs> at some point because she just starts playing the ball and, and everything looks dangerous, including the equalizer yeah. right before the death to send this thing into into extra time and turn it into a classic. Yeah, and then how about, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is funny, Trinity Rodman, 22, Rosamund Guasi, 22, McKenna Morris, 22, to Hal Hirschfeld, also 22. So pretty solid. future, I think, is looking pretty bright, and um, I think their head coach, too, is is a, a good, I don't know, decade or so, maybe younger than me. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this one goes to added extra time. We get the extra 30 minutes and a mini rant alert here. I'm just done with this extra 30 minutes. I'm not sure what we didn't sort out in the first 90 minutes or maybe 100 minutes considering this is NWSL or maybe 110 minutes with mm-hmm. all the extra stoppage time. I'm not sure why we need an extra 30. I mean, I'd love to just get right to it. Like, well, let's go. We, we already sorted out the teams drew. Let's get to the PKs. But it turns out, um, yeah, a lot happened in that extra 30. <laughs> Yeah, pretty pretty back and forth. There were chances to be had on both sides. You've been on this crusade, I think, since She Believes when those matches were going straight to PKs after 90 minutes, and you were telling me you preferred that. I like I like this take from you. I am on the opposite side. I like the extra 30 minutes because I want to see more more football. But I see I see the merits in your argument here. Can you share with our pals? who maybe didn't catch that episode back in the She Believes Cup, because I don't know if anybody else notices these kind of things. We picked up quite a few more new pals since we helped break (laughs) that Lily Johannes uh, to the squad, to the U.S. uh, Women's National Team. What is it about the 30 minutes that you don't quite like? Yeah, I just feel like fatigue setting in, Hmm. you know, a little bit of jogging. There's some extra injury risk, which I don't like. Sure. You know, I want to see the mad scramble the last few minutes. Somebody try to get a late winner. I want to see that one. Players are relatively fresh, so I'm, sure. I'm I might be on an island, but that's that's a change I'd love to see. I like it. I mean, I I always think with with a penalty kick shootout, there is a part of me that's just like I don't know. You don't you don't settle a baseball game with a home run derby if it's tied after nine, or you know what I mean. Like yeah, sometimes I wonder, and you know, I could be just like maybe I'm over the top with whatever kind of like football snobbery or whatever, but because penalty kicks yield historic career changing moments. That's fair. I don't want to totally discount PKs, but I always kind of look at it as like I'm here to watch the the run of play in the football. So that's kind of what I, what I'm here for, but we'll toss it to to you guys. Let us know. New pals of the show, old pals of the show, where do you land on this? I like that. I like that. Yeah, man, we got to pull up. All right, so let's, let's fast forward to the final. I want to get your quick first impressions. I think we covered a little bit of it. Washington Spirit, Orlando Pride for the championship. Who on earth could have predicted those two teams <laughs> go. would end up in the championship. Maybe let's run a little clip here. I'm going to go a little off the board here. Give me Jonathan Hidalgo's as Washington Spirit. Okay. 2024 NWSL champions oh, as wow. they squeak by fellow finalist, my Orlando Pride. <laughs> Wow, yes. That's Let's that's my go. final that I'm predicting. Oh, Nelly, look at our guy. The soothsayer himself. The man with the crystal ball down in Orlando, Florida. Nicely done, my good man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sadly, though, I did pick the spirit to win. I'll talk about that one later. Um, <laughs> yeah, how you feel about that? <laughs> suffice it to say, I'm changing my pick. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I don't think, and this might be complete fan freak out nature from your boy, but I don't think this one is relatively close. I think, okay. <laughs> I think Orlando, watching what Astaire did against that defense, mm-hmm. watching what Ellis Stevens was able to do, and like just the, the space and, and freedom to move that Washington allowed, I think is going to be an absolute nightmare. And Washington struggled to score against a defense. I think I thought Ann Kutcherberger was, was really good, and the Gotham defense was, was solid. But this Orlando defense is otherworldly. If I had to make a prediction, I think it's at least 2-0 in the final. And I don't think it's particularly close. I think we actually saw the final. I mentioned this earlier. Yeah. This past Sunday, Orlando KC. I thought those were the two best teams. Okay. Bold. I like it. And just because we're a journalism podcast, I always appreciate you holding me accountable. Let's not forget that Dino also said maybe the Kansas City Current would win the final a few weeks ago. That's okay. 
We can take <laughs> we can take multiple picks. <laughs> That's fine. I'm the dope who said the Portland Thorns would win the final. If we can not, we can not run that clip from the first show of the NWSL season. If you don't mind, well, save me, save me some editing work. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I see where you're coming from on this, and we gotta, we have to shout her out. I know you mentioned her briefly earlier, and she is now an ITC Hall of Famer and like locked in friend of the show. Corey Dyke played really well against Tim Wachuinga on that side mm-hmm. of the pitch in multiple spots, pushing her into areas where she just limited the danger that she was able to create. So obviously, Rosemont Kwasi, we like her as a player, good young player. If Corey Dyke was able to kind of do that against Tem Wachawinga, she might turn Kwasi into almost a non-factor in this match. It's only one side of the field, even if even if Washington and Harald does, you know they're going to try to switch things up, move people around, kind of see what that looks like. Um, I am going to pick, as I have continue to say the double is on. I think it's going to be a nail biter. I definitely, I don't think, I don't think the pride walk away from it, but I think the defense shows up. I think there are going to be some moments, but give me Orlando pride one nil in the final Mm. and they win the double. Marta absolutely cemented the greatest player who ever lived. If it wasn't already as cemented as it could be, put that baby in bronze after that. Love that. The other thing too, I mean, now that we're talking picks, I kind of felt a little vindicated with my Banda MVP pick. I, I, you know, your boy sure. was out on an island. You know, obviously, I, I know she didn't have the most productive season, but you know, we can parse what the V in most valuable means. That's an age-old conversation that I don't think we uh, quite have time for. But watching it on the field, Banda is just a force. Chewinga is at that level too. Had a better season, I think. There's there's no doubt about that. But you know, when it came down to it, I had to pick Barbara Banda, and I think on the field felt pretty vindicated watching them go head to head, even though they weren't, you know, locked up against each other. But Banda just had, it just felt like she had more impact. I do want to shift gears though. We've got some news today. U.S. Women's National Team announced their roster for the upcoming European friendlies. Anything stick out to you there? Oh, I don't know. I mean, Lily Johannes is going to play in those European uh, friendlies. So that's pretty cool. I think that'll be uh, interesting to see. Uh, those Exciting. friendlies are against England. The Lionesses, for people mm-hmm. who might be interested in that match uh, at Wembley. I think that should be a pretty big stage. And the next match against the Netherlands at The Hague. So those are going to be, I think they're going to be quite a few eyeballs on both of those. And with good reason. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure totally what to make of the roster makeup because you look at it, no triple espresso at all. So I think we're, yep. we're just limited to chai lattes or something. We'll see. <laughs> um, and a good mix of young players and vets, you know, on the oh, vet yeah. side, you know, you do have Roosevelt, you do have Lindsey Horan, Lynn Williams, Alyssa Nair is back, Casey Kruger, and a couple new faces. You know, you mentioned Lily Johannes, not quite a new face. Ali Sentnor is going to make her debut. Mm-hmm. Yasmin Ryan's going to get another shot. Emma Sears as well. Do you think there's any kind of like moving and shaking here going on? Or is Emma Hayes looking at like availability and like, or like, what do you think Emma Hayes is trying to take away from these two matches with this roster makeup? It's a great question. I saw there was a little bit of uh, teeth gnashing about no triple espresso. Let's give them a break. Let's give them some time to rest and recover. I think Sophie Smith, Mal Swanson, and Trinity Rodman, who's going to be on the heels, uh, win or lose, of a final. Let's maybe let them start to enjoy their offseason. I think that's that's one thing. Now, obviously, you're going to have Emily Sams from the Orlando Pride, who also win or lose. Uh, Casey Kruger, uh, we talked about Hal Hirschfeld. Uh, they'll be on this roster. Those players, I think Kruger is kind of at the part of, of her career where it's like, let's get you some more of these international caps before it's time to, to hang them up. No offense to, to Casey Kruger, but like, you know, the age is, is what it is. And then with Emily Sams and Hal Hirschfeld, let's start to get you more integrated in the squad. This feels like when you talk about kind of that mix of the younger players with very, very few previous caps and the mix of some of the older uh, of the older vets, this feels like the beginning of the mesh, the beginning of the transition phase mm. where it's let's start to work in. How does Emma Sears fit into this? How does Yasmin Ryan fit into this? Alyssa Thompson is back, which is like a funny one because, you know, she was in the 2023 World Cup and then from that showing, no fault of her own really, didn't seem to be quite ready for that stage yet. But as we saw her form back half of this season in the NWSL, I think it's pretty clear that she is, if not 
ready today, very much approaching being ready for like the large international stages. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm dying to see what that forward setup looks like, what that midfield yeah. looks like, who's paired with who defensively. I think we're probably going to get some Sam's Germa minutes just to see Should. what that looks like. That's going to be pretty epic. All right, man. Big week domestically here. Anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? I think we largely covered it. I do want to say, lastly, that Mandy Hot, goalkeeper for the Utah Royals, I thought she really handled herself well through some really difficult circumstances throughout the season. So awesome to see Emma Hayes reward that. I know I say it every time we talk international football, but I just I feel compelled to say it because sometimes maybe some of the teams I watch annoy me with this. Club form has to matter mm. when you select your national team and see who's who might earn a spot on there. So shout out to Mandy Hodd because that's really impressive. And Fallon Tullis Joyce from Manchester United. Hopefully yep. she might get her first cap under these stars and stripes. So could be cool to see what the goalkeeper spot looks like. Definitely excited for that. Another couple of quick programming reminders later this week, we'll have a Champions League match day four recap after Wednesday, Thursday action. So be sure to stick around. And with that said, I think we did it. This has been another episode of Into the Channel. Sincere, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, listening, following, liking, subscribing, just playing, hanging out with your boys. Remember to like if you liked and subscribe or follow Into the Channel, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to watch or listen. Leave us a review over your favorite podcast app. Links to all of our socials in the show notes of this episode. And a big thank you to my co-host as well, Mr. Grant Angle, for bearing with me while your boy was in DNP status. I appreciate you, bro. The bat signal goes up and we are back like we didn't miss a beat. And I appreciate you for that. Your toughness rating in FIFA would be 99, my good man. I'm glad you made it through. Glad you're back. Glad to be on the pitch, on the podcasting pitch with you again. Same with everybody else. Thanks for checking us out. And we will see you all next time.